Yo, what's up, Collide? Welcome back. We're glad you're here. We're in week three of a series called Like, Follow, and Share. We've been talking about social media and the internet and how much time we spend liking, following, and sharing other things. And so we've been asking the question, why don't we do that with our faith in Jesus? I'll speak just for myself. I spend hours every single week liking, following, and sharing. And when it comes to sharing specifically, I am so quick to do so. Anytime I see a funny video or a funny meme, I think instantly, who do I know who needs to see this video or this photo? If it might even be something from my own life. Like if I went to the zoo and saw a cute little baby animal, instantly thinking, who can I share this with? Or maybe I learned the newest TikTok dance. Something like that, I instantly think, who can I share this with? Or maybe it's just a fire fit pick in my camera roll. The people gotta know I got the fit pics, you know? And so I'm always thinking about where I can share things in my life. And the question I had to ask myself was, why don't I think about my faith that way? And maybe you've asked yourself the same question. I think when it comes to our faith, sometimes we're a little bit standoffish about sharing it. We don't think about it quite the same way. But the truth is that the things that we value are the things that we share. Like, like if I really value uh, baby pandas, I love them, and I love the Philadelphia Phillies, you better believe I'm going to be sharing stuff about the Philadelphia Phillies and the baby pandas. I mean, you don't need social media to be sharing stuff. You share stuff just by interacting with other people or by texting. You can share in a bunch of different ways. You see, we can tell what people care about based on what they share. The things that you share show what you really value, what you really want on the inside. The things we share say a lot about who we are. I mean, if you've got a friend who's always sharing their dreams and aspirations about money, you know they care a lot about money. Or if you have a friend who always has a way to bring the conversation back to themselves, you know they care a lot about themselves. And so the question for us, you and me, is what are the things that we're sharing revealing about our lives? There's actually a great story that talks about this in Luke chapter 5 where some friends shared something with someone else who needed it. So turn with me to Luke 5. Let's read it together. It says, One day while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea as well as from Jerusalem. And the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. They tried to take him inside to Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. Then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd, right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, Young man, your sins are forgiven. But the Pharisees and teachers of the religious law said to themselves, Who does he think he is? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I'll prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And immediately, as everyone watched, the man jumped up, picked up his mat, and went home praising God. Everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe, and they praised God, exclaiming, We have seen amazing things today. These friends brought their friend to Jesus because they knew Jesus could do something for him that they could not. We don't know what they believed about Jesus altogether, but we know that they went to great risk in order to get their friend in front of Jesus. They knew they had to share Jesus with their friend because they knew what Jesus could do for him. And then it ended up uh, resulting in the best possible scenario for their friend. Not only was he healed, but he had his sins forgiven by Jesus. You see, they weren't going to let anything hold them back from sharing Jesus with their friend. No fear, no obstacles, nothing could keep them from sharing Jesus with their friend. Because at the end of the day, these guys knew that sharing Jesus was what they had to do. Because Jesus is someone worth sharing. That's our big idea. Jesus is someone worth sharing. And sharing is really just all about connecting with other people. It's uh, giving them opportunities to ask questions and learn and speak to you and interact with you. And so the question for us is, if your life was a commercial, what would that commercial be about? Think about it for a second. Like a YouTube ad or a commercial that comes up on TV. If that was your life, what would it be like? What would that commercial be talking about? Is Jesus in that commercial? Your friends are watching you. What are they seeing? The Gospels tell us to like, follow, and share Jesus so that others will do the same. 
let me let you off the hook a little bit though. You might be thinking, do I need to know all the ins and outs of faith and have the answer to every hard question? I don't think so. But I think you do need to know what it means when we say Jesus changes lives. How did he change our lives? I mean, hopefully, if you've experienced the grace of God, the grace of God coming to earth in Jesus Christ, paying for our sins, forgiving us when we didn't deserve it, hopefully if you've experienced that, you're gonna show that kind of grace to people in your life when they treat you badly or they do something that's unfair to you. If you've experienced the love of God, knowing that he wants a relationship with you, hopefully you'll extend that same kind of love to other people even when they're acting unlovable. If you've experienced God's justice and seen what it means in scripture, hopefully that changes the way you see the world. If you've experienced God's truth, and we see Jesus calling out hypocrites in scripture over and over again, he cares about truth. If you've experienced that, hopefully you also value truth and don't just rely on your feelings to make decisions, but instead look for evidence for what you believe. Having a relationship with Jesus changes you. It has to. If you're not sharing the message of God's goodness, and his love and his kindness and his truth and his justice, then it's possible you haven't experienced those things for yourself. Because when you do experience them, when you have your first taste of who God is, you're gonna be like those friends who are willing to dig through the roof just to get their friend near Jesus because they knew they had to share Jesus with their friend. That's, I think, where we have to end up as well. So here's the big question. If this week people got to spend a full week with you, I'm talking 24 hours a day, and they got to see everything you did, everything you typed, every picture you took, every thought you had, are they gonna bump into Jesus? Are they gonna see Jesus in the things that you share? I think that's the question we have to answer, and I can't answer it for you. Y'all, we don't have to be perfect to share Jesus, but we do have to know how Jesus changes lives. We love you, Collide. We'll see you next week.